Mr Acting Deputy President, I uh, would like to firstly thank those families, organisations and individuals for attending our hearings in Catherine, Oakey and Williamtown. And I'd like to say to those families, your patience and perseverance in explaining yet again for many of you your experiences with the chemical PFAS and the contamination in terms of PFAS and its impact on you and your lives uh, is deeply appreciated in sharing your story to committee members. Some of you spoke quite personally about the troubling health concerns you have, while others spoke passionately about the financial impact you're experiencing as a result in a drop in property values and your inability to have the option to move from your contaminated location. Some of you gave evidence that you do not wish to move at all, but would appreciate the financial ability to stay. The committee heard evidence on the anxiety around a lack of coordination, in particular between government agencies, both at a state and federal level. It's why the committee has strongly recommended the establishment of a coordinated general role in order to do exactly that, to coordinate and to provide, and that the role should include providing ongoing monitoring of PFAS levels in all management areas using a range of sampling methods and publish the results as soon as practicable in a publicly accessible format. That the coordination, coordinated general role should provide leadership to drive effective, transparent and consistent responses to PFAS contamination at sites across the country. The role should identify gaps and priorities for investigation and remediation based on the extent of contamination and risk to human and environmental health in each area. The role should also work across portfolios and with state, territory and local governments to overcome barriers to cooperation, coordinate actions and to clearly communicate outcomes and advice to the public and to provide a national point of contact and accountability for the government's response to the PFAS issue, including annual reporting to the parliament. Mr Acting Deputy President, uh, consistently we heard uh, in each of those three locations, Oakey, Williamtown and Catherine, the concerns around coordination, uh, certainly uh, in the Catherine region in particular. Uh, there was major distrust uh, in relation to coordination in particular across all three areas, distrust with defence. And the committee took evidence that uh, that trust uh, contributed largely to the fact that defence is seen as the contaminator uh, in terms of uh, the product, uh, PFAS, emanating from defence onto properties and uh, water uh, in surrounding uh, areas. So as a result, we've highly recommended uh, the coordination and recognise that uh, defence can't be seen to do everything, yet it must do a consistent amount. However, there has to be an even higher level of accountability uh, in terms of having this particular role uh, recommended uh, to, in our report. I take this uh, moment as well, Mr Acting Deputy President, to uh, mention the role of my fellow Labor colleagues on the committee, Meryl Swanson MP, Sharon Clayton MP and Senator Claire Moore. And I personally, as deputy chair of this subcommittee, uh, appreciated their expertise and advice uh, in those respective areas where we went to gather evidence and to listen. And I also uh, take the time to acknowledge uh, the chair, Andrew Lamming, uh, who I worked with very closely uh, throughout our seven and eight months uh, working on this. Uh, it was incredibly difficult to listen to the stories of families who are deeply traumatised in some cases and deeply affected by the impact of this chemical on them. And I note very strongly here in the Senate to all senators that it does not matter how much you hear about the contaminant PFAS. Know this. It is a very real and impacting problem in terms of the lives of those families across all those regions, and not to mention, really, all of those who were unable to get to. And I certainly appreciated that we received around 80 submissions to the committee. But of course, it is an unknown uh, concern that still uh, needs to be explored more broadly across the country. We've also, Mr Acting Deputy President, in recommendation five, 
uh, recommended that the Australian government assist property owners and businesses in affected areas for demonstrated quantifiable financial losses associated with PFAS contamination that has emanated from defence bases. And priority for compensation, including the possibility of buybacks, should, in the first instance, be given to the most seriously affected residents. And this is a challenge uh, put down immediately to uh, the, the government to act immediately uh, to make sure that not another Christmas goes by uh, when these families are filled with uncertainty about their future. And I think it is uh, critical that we acknowledge that there are serious uh, issues here that need to be dealt with. In terms of the other recommendations of the report, recommendation six, that the, the government make available free individualised case management and financial counselling services to those affected by PFAS contamination. And we also go on to recommend that uh, uh, the government implements legislation and policies to ban nationally uh, the use of, contain and ultimately safely destroy long-chain uh, PFAS-based firefighting foams and to place appropriate restrictions on the non-essential use of shorter-chain PFAS-based foams and to continue to encourage the use of PFAS-free alternatives wherever possible. We also urge the Australian government to urgently ratify the listing of PFOS under the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. And further, the committee recommends that the government expedite the process for ratification of PFOA and PFHXS in the event that they are listed under the Stockholm Convention in the future. We have a total of 10 recommendations. I urge senators here to please read, to take heed of these concerns of families uh, across uh, our jurisdictions that we've uh, listened to, uh, Queensland, New South Wales and the Northern Territory, and urge that they do uh, push their respective uh, leaders as best they can in regards to these recommendations. I also want to just uh, take the time, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, to personally say thank you especially to uh, my constituency in the Northern Territory for the people who gave evidence. A very difficult time, uh, certainly for uh, all of all concerned, not just the families, but also to defence. And I, I do commend uh, the work of Steve Grishoviak and uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the tremendous amount uh, that he carries in all of this, along with his team. But at the end of the day, the people out there expect greater leadership from this parliament uh, to be able to see that the coordination is not uh, happening the way that it could. We could be better at what we do in this regard. And that's why the, the urgency in, in the coordinated general role. And I'd like to just uh, finish up with thanking the work of the Secretariat. Uh, always wonderful to work with you uh, and with people who put so much time into the logistics of that kind of work, the travel across the country, uh, the many witnesses who come forward. Uh, it was an incredibly important time for our parliament to listen to those concerns across the country. And I say a very special thank you to all the staff in the Secretariat. Thank you very much for your patience and your diligence in uh, getting us through this report.